The United Nations Security Council has been meeting regularly over the past week to discuss the Russian-Ukrainian war. There's been growing frustration with the Council as the resolutions presented by the various member states have all been vetoed by Russia, which itself is a party to the conflict. But how exactly does the United Nations Security Council work? Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. In this video series, I try to explain the concepts and theories behind current events, all in two minutes or less. When the United Nations was established at the end of World War II, it enshrined a compromise among the major powers of the day and calcified the existing global power structure. The Security Council was created to address threats to international peace and security. The Council has five permanent members, China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. In addition, there are 10 non-permanent or rotating members elected on a regional basis by the General Assembly. Thus, Africa has three non-permanent seats on the Council, the Asia-Pacific region also has three, Latin America and the Caribbean have two seats, and so on. Under most circumstances, the Security Council is the only United Nations body that has the power to enforce its decisions. The decisions of all other UN bodies are merely recommendations to the member states. Decisions of the Council require at least nine of the 15 states on the Security Council to vote in favor of a proposal. In addition, Article 23 of the United Nations Charter establishes the requirement for great power unanimity, meaning that the five permanent members on the Council can veto any item under consideration by the Council merely by voting against it. The Council can call additional UN member states to participate in the discussions of the Council. These invited participants do not have a vote. This occurs most often when a state is party to a conflict or has a vested interest in the outcome of a matter under consideration. Thus, the Security Council invited the Ukrainian permanent representative, or the ambassador, to participate in the sessions of the Council which dealt with the Russian-Ukrainian war. And in an additional twist, the presidency of the Council rotates between the member states, with each Council member holding the rotating presidency for a month before the position is passed on to the next state in line. In the current situation, this led to Russia holding the presidency of the Council while it debated Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The presidency rotated to the United Arab Emirates at the beginning of March, and then to the United Kingdom in April, the United States in May, and so on. Normally, the Council presidency is merely a symbolic position, though Council presidents will sometimes use the position to focus on a specific issue of interest to that state. Any member state may request the Security Council take up an issue, and the Council may add an agenda item by simply a majority vote. It seems likely the situation in Ukraine will continue to occupy the Security Council's agenda for some time. That's it for now. If you found this helpful, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to catch future explainers as I release them. You might also want to check out my United Nations video series, which I'll link to in the description below. Please leave any questions you have about this video or suggestions you'd like to see me cover in future explainers in the comments section. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.